emailed you take that out and go over. So if you have time, if you want to take a second to print it out, um, if you have the capability to do that, then you can write it. If not, we can just go over it verbally. I don't know if you're at home or not. I can't print it right now. No worries. No more. It's okay. Yeah, pull me up. I got it. You got it. Well, I'm just going to, you can print it out later. I'm going to screen share it and we'll go over it. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Can you see it? <laughs> Booyah. So I'm blind. So, all right. So look, right. So you're, you're there. Did you get it? Knock, knock. Who's there? Yeah, I see it. We're good. Cool. All right. So here we go, right? Eighth grade now, second year, 14s. Right. I'm going to I'm going to stop share for a minute. Right. Just to kind of give you I want to see a little uh, more clear. So, you know, here we're at. Right. We're at that decision mark. We're at that pivotal mark where, you know, mom and dad, you know, a couple of years ago you were lefty. Right. Mom and dad put you in a sport. You're kind of playing because, yeah, you love it. But mom and dad love it. Right. And 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 they want to push you and they like watching you play. So you're playing. But now, like you've played at the highest level. Right. You just went to PGF Nationals. Right. You did well out there. You've had a good season with your team. Now you're getting ready to go into second year 14s. You know, after this year, it's high school. So, like, while we continue to focus on feelings and mindset and all that, I want to, with you, turn it up. Right. Because, like, dude, I think you really got something, right? Like you've got a tall athletic build. You've got really, you've got a strong mindset. You're taking a lot of this stuff in pretty well, right? If if the things that you're saying out loud are really the way that you're feeling inside, like it appears that you're doing okay. Some up points, some down points. Remember, we're going to follow, you know, we're not always going to stay here. We're going to have that down point. We're going to have those bad days. We're going to have that, you know, where the where the home run gets hit against us, right? We're going to have those those moments, right? But learning these things and dealing with, you know, those moments helps us rebound and get back quicker. So I want to focus really for you uh, on, you know, really turning it up in training, turning it up in school, turning it up in practice, turning it up in your mindset, getting locked in and really pushing that envelope to push to the next level, right? Because you know, if your work ethic matches your athleticism and that matches your DNA and, and that matches your talent, that equals somebody that's going to end up being really, really, really special, right? Um, so, you know, let's start thinking about those opportunities and maximize everything that we can along the way, right? Um, I think you can handle that. I think, you know, you've got a good support system around you. Uh, you've got a lot of good examples. You're in a good organization. You're on a great team. You've got solid coaching. You know, you've got parents as a support group. You've got me and, and all your teammates to lean on, things like that, right? Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for you to turn it up, right? So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today is not just telling you, turn it up, like you need to be better, you know, but giving you some good focused ideas, right? So we went over this last time. We went over your top three goals for this season. So you just verbally tell me this stuff again, right? I'm not writing anything down here. You're not right in a position to write anything down. So top three goals for this season are what? And if you don't remember off the top of your head, that's okay. Um, To hit 63. I know that I'm at 65. Sorry. For pitching. 63, 65 and 13. It's impressive either way. <laughs> And then I want my batting average to, like, be 400, like, over 400. Okay. I'm trying to work for that. What was the third one? Oh, you said HPP. Oh, yeah. I want to make the U15 um HPP team for the USA. All right, cool. So I'm going to take some notes because why you might be able to remember everything, this old man will not, right? So first one. You said, I want to throw 63, 63 to 65. Let's say that, right? Okay. Is that fair? Or you want to just say 65? You tell me it's your goal. Yeah, I want to hit 65. That's... Okay, 65 it is. Okay. 
Now, the second one was when I hit 400, okay? And the third one was I want to make the HPP team for USA Softball, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so if I dig deeper into these goals, what I'm hearing is you want to increase your overall velocity to give you a stronger weapon in the circle to be able to have more command and control and get more wins for your team. Is that right? Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's deeper than just hitting 65. If I hit 65 yeah. and I throw it into the backstop every time, it doesn't matter. Right. If I hit 65 and I throw it in the dirt every time, it doesn't matter. That's okay to do that initially while we're gaining control. Right. But if I'm hearing you, ultimately, you want to throw a 65, have good command and control so that you're a more dangerous weapon in the circle for your team. Like you like the sound yeah. of that one, huh? <laughs> All right, cool. And I want to hit 400. Why do I want to hit 400? I, I feel like this season I've been like so inconsistent with my hitting. I think that's hurt. Like I would start the tournament off smashing and then sun i get to sunday and then i'm just like tired and everything just starts going downhill i want to like work to be consistent and keep my batting of batting average over 400 or around 400 All right so listen to what you said there right i get to sunday and i'm just tired right you're also a a, a an elite athlete that is pitching playing the field you know you're doing a lot of things right which is in the Florida sun, you know, working out, doing all of these all over the place things. So when you get to Sunday, I appreciate your honesty there. Tired, right? Like, bruh, <laughs> like I threw 15 innings this weekend. I, I've been swinging the bat all weekend. I've been running the bases. Like you don't ever, you have no chill and that's okay, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's what sets you apart from the rest uh, of your peer group, right? Um but you also have to, you know, if you're tired, figure out why is that? Do I need to have better hydration? Do I need to have better fuel, better nutrition? Do I need to have better rest? You know, all of that goes into, you know, hitting 400. It's not just about your hands and your mechanics, right? You've, you've just freely said, hey, I'm a, I'm a little, boom. Okay, so how do we feed that? That's not mechanics, right? That's fuel, that's nutrition, that's rest, that's breaks. Um, you know, that's knowing how to manage when you're, I mean, cause you're right. Look at what you did just a few short weeks ago. You had three home runs almost back to back to back, right? So you have the power, you have the consistency. Um, but as you play these tough schedules, we have to make sure that you're drinking enough water, getting enough electrolytes, have enough vitamins and minerals, right? Really having enough protein, enough nutrition, enough carbohydrates, like you're doing all of this, plus your body is rapidly growing, right? Because you're still young and going through it. So maintaining all of those things is going to help you stay fresh, stay energized, you know, but you're also a human being right? A young human being. So if you are out there for four, five, six games in a weekend, you know, it's, it's going to be a little hard to be as fresh late into Sunday as it is early into Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Um, so keep working out, right? Have a good solid workout plan, have a good nutrition plan, have a good hydration plan, a good recovery and rest plan so that, you know, you do, you are fresh uh, longer. Does that make sense? Yes, but sir. if you look at the, you look at the, you know, you look at college ball, you look at uh, high, any, you know, level of high level ball, uh, look, I, thumbs up, I fixed my pen, it gave you a thumbs up. Um, you know, the, these, there are people that are doing all of it, but they're, they're very far few and in between, you know, so continue to push yourself, but continue to follow all those other things that we just talked about, right? So I want to throw a 65 so that I can be, uh, you know, a, a better weapon in the circle for my team, have good command. I want to hit 400 because I want to be in the lineup. I want to be a contributor. I want to participate. I want to be able to help my team. I have the ability. I've shown that I can do it. I've shown that it's something that I'm capable of, but I want to be able to get more consistent in it, right? And that's just going to come with maturity, reps, believing in yourself, confidence, those kinds of things. Right now, which of these goals right? Do you think will have the biggest impact on your game if you actually achieve it? 
Um, probably pitching, I would say. Like, my different speeds, I think, would, like, really help me in the mount. And in, if it helps me in the mount, it would probably help my team. Got it. Right. And the third one, I don't want to skip by it. The HPP team on the USA softball program. Right. So that's a goal for yours. Right. So that's something that you have to look at. Do you know what past people's results were? What are the benchmarks? What do you have to achieve in order to be selected for that? Is that information even out anywhere? Is that something that, you know, Coach Jeff or myself or somebody like what if previous years participants scored on the metrics? I, I mean, I don't even know what they test for. Right. Um, we'll, we'll if you know, we'll look into that. If not, I can look into it for sure. But I'm assuming it's metrics. It's probably run, throw, hit, you know, all of those uh, things, as well as being evaluated on the field. What do you got? I've already made like the HPP, like I've already made through the first round, which is all like how fast you run, what's your speed pitching. Like, okay. I've already passed that. Oh, I that's made stuff that. that I'm talking about. You already skated through that. No big deal. Yeah, I already did that. Already it's did. the, um, in Vero, Vero? During P the same Vero. weekend of states as she goes to Vero, and yeah. they select um a group of 18 athletes from the 2010, 11, and 12 class to go play in Italy in the World Cup next year. So that's okay. what she's trying to go for. Okay. So I love that. Right. So now let's really dig deep into that. Right. Let's figure out who those kids were that have been selected before you. Right. And, and I'm going to look into it now. I got it written down. Let's figure out what the benchmarks are. Right. And, and then let's create targeted goals to reach, meet and exceed those benchmarks. Right. Let's, let's create a plan to turn, Riley Swiley into, uh, you know, just, just boss lady Rubu. You know what I'm saying? Ha, <laughs> come on. Right. Because if that's what you want to do, who's going to stop you? No one. Right. My dad aren't going to stop you. They're going to the they're gonna, they're gonna get you the gym membership, right? They're going to get you the coaching. They're going to get you the, the, the tools that you need. They're going to get you every single thing that you want because you're their baby and they love you you know, and they believe in you and they know that you can do it. Right. And so, so then it ultimately just becomes up to you, right? Because if you want to make that team, then I need 20 push-ups and 20 sit-ups, not only before I go to bed, but as soon as I roll out of bed, right. I need an extra bucket three, four times a week, right. If not every day, right. I need proper rest and recovery, right? I need working on these specific benchmarks. I need weight training. I need band training. I need athletic training. I need footwork. I need everything in order to, I mean, if you want it, I need right. That's what I need. I need Rocky Balboa to come out inside you and I need you to put it on like you're getting right at ready to fight Apollo. You don't know what I'm talking about, but your mama does. Right. Like you're getting ready to fight Apollo in the ring. Right. Anyways, just imagine a big fight you getting ready to go into. Right. And that's what I need you to do, which is perfect, because this is exactly what my whole thing is about, is getting you turned up, getting you ready to become a superior athlete, a superior academic kid, somebody who is just locked in and focused, isn't worried about what anybody else in the world is doing right now. If it ain't with my family, if it ain't with my team, I'm locked in, ready to go. Boom, done. I'm about to turn it up because people are going to know my name. Right. And I'm going to help my team and I want to be competing across the world. And that's the path that I want to take. So if that's what you want to do, then my girl, let's do it. Right. Let's do it. I think it's amazing. I love those goals. And if that's where you're going, uh, then let's get you there. So let's talk about that. What is going in? Perfect. What a perfect segue. It's almost like Coach Bill was connected with your goals from last week. And I knew exactly <laughs> what you would be thinking about today. Huh? Right. So what does going all in mean to you? Right. What it, What is what is just a full total commitment to getting 65 to hitting 400 to getting on the HPP team at the next level like what does that look like for you to me it's like when I'm just like sitting around instead of watching tv like go outside and work out like I should have like a couple minutes of like tv but instead of like an hour or something like go out and work like my free time go out and work because that's what will get me to like the next level in 
softball. I love it, right? Continue to push yourself. Now, again, you know me, I'm going to advocate for balance, right? I want you, you know, to go to the birthday parties with your friend when you get invited to them and not skip those things at such a young age, right? Tournament weekend, hey, ain't nothing I can do about that, right? If I have tournament weekend, I got to go play. I'll drop a card off. I'll see you later. But on the weekends off, on the weekdays off that you're not playing, I want you to have a good balance, right? But then when it's time to work, why you keep and looking at mom? What 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 are we doing? We miss birthdays. We all miss birthday parties, right? No, I miss What's every up? birthday party though. Like, I don't think I've gone to a birthday party since. We just had this conversation. <laughs> like, literally had this conversation. Right, but listen, like, okay, great. Let me let me explain something to you, right? And I'm just learning this because I'm a high wired, high powered guy too, right? It's great that we do all these things, but if there's no one there doing them with us, like what's the point, right? If we're not sharing other memories, if we're not investing ourselves in other things and other people while we're hard charging, working on our goals as well, like you'll appreciate your goals more if you do other things. You, you, that sounds funny, right? I'll appreciate my goals more if I do other things. Yeah, sometimes you have to disconnect yourself from that in order to feel good about it and get back engaged with it. It's like that August and December break from softball that people are supposed to take but never do. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for you, you know, just going all in and 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 just separating yourself doesn't mean still not having a balance because- you know, you don't want to be alone through this process either. And people only ask you to go to so many birthday parties before they just think that you're busy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, go, it's okay to go. Right. And I'm telling you, this is your last year of middle school. Next year, you're going to be in high school. And, and as long as your parents are okay with it and, and they're all right, like you're going to homecoming, like you're going to prom, like you get four homecomings. That's it. Right. There's going to be 900 tournaments. You get two proms. There's going to be 900 tournaments like you carry your behind at a dress store. You get a dress. You put on some shoes. You do whatever it is you want to do. And you go to the daggum dance like that's it, because you only get one opportunity to be 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then after that, you have your whole life to be just what they call an adult. Right. Like. No. So we're going to have fun outside of our goals too, because that will make us want and appreciate our goals even more. So going all in, right? Like that doesn't mean shutting everything down, but it means like shutting a lot down. It means like staying locked in and focused. It means like when I get out of school, you're right. There's no TV. There's no, you know, candies. There's no cakes. There's no cookies. There's Focus, lock in. I'm hitting a couple. I mean, listen, you know what I'm saying. You're a 13 year old kid. You can have a Snickers bar. Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? But I'm saying you be you locked in. I got to get my five buckets today. There's no excuse. I got to do my warm ups today. There's no excuse. I got to up the level in my workout. There's no excuse. If you want to be great, you have to go get greatness. It's just not going to show up at your door. Very rarely does it knock and say, hey, girl, I'm here. I've been waiting on you. No, you have to go get it. Does that make sense? All right, yes, cool. Sir. Focus points. Refine your process. Identify one area of your pitching that needs the most refinement. Is it your mechanics, your mental approach, your game strategy, your communication with your catcher? What specific dates, tasks, excuse me, tasks, steps woo, will you take to refine this area? So, Name me one area of your pitching that you think needs the most work. Um, probably mechanics. I would have to say, like, like with some of my pitches, like pitching wise, like spin wise, I really want to like drop. For example, I really want to like focus on spinning that right instead of like arming it. I want to like do like the right mechanics on that so I don't hurt my arm again. And right. for my drive out, I want to get it stronger and make sure I'm dragging on my toe and not on the side of my foot because I'm really bad at that. Right. So here we go, right? Someone has has told you that over and over again. So now it's imprinted in my head that I'm really bad at that, right? So – so instead of having that focus of I'm really bad at that first, make a mental connection that you're working on it and just fix it, 
right? Easier said than done. But if we have the mentality that I'm going to just fix it, it will get fixed a whole lot sooner. Because I'm telling you right now, somebody, you do it, somebody corrects you, and then you go, oh, yeah, I'm bad at that. Right. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So you're working on it. It's improving, right? And you've already got it. It's the drop ball. It's your best pitch. Bro, I just need the same mentality with everything. Anytime anybody tells you you're no good at something, I need you to remember that's the thing that you're the best at. Yes, sir. Like that's what you're the best at, right? Like, that's it. And nothing else is acceptable. Now we're going to continue to work on it, but we're not approaching it with the mentality that I'm bad at it. I'm no good at it. Right. We're approaching the mentality. I'm the best at it. And I'm going to continue to be the best at it because I work on it every single day. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're just not going to continue to limit ourselves with these uh, these negative. It's the worst thing. It's the best. It's the it's the thing that I'm the baddest at. We're we're not going to observe or acknowledge any of that, right? We're going to observe that I'm 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 the best at it. I'm working at it, and it's continually getting better. And that is how, right? When you hit the down button on an elevator, it never goes up. Just saying. Right. So in order to get up, we got to push the up button. Does that make sense? And the up button says that I'm the best at it. I think you are anyway. Right. So mechanics, we're going to get better at that. You're going, you know, to your pitching coach, you're doing your lessons, you're working on these things. They're giving you these cues, my drive, I'm this, I'm that. Right. So, so continue to work with them, continue to push that envelope. And when you show up to those lessons, you're the best at them. This is what you do. And we're going to continue, right? And when and when you get where you need to be, then you tell your coach, I want more. Then you tell yourself internally, I need more. I'm going harder. I'm going further, right? And that's what we do. We get stronger, better, quicker. And we more importantly, start trusting ourselves that we truly do have this and we truly are the best at it. And we truly are great. And I want the ball and I have complete and total confidence in myself in this moment. And no one can take that because I've worked my behind off to get to this point. Word. Word. So what specific steps will you take to refine that this year? Your mechanics. What are you going to do specifically to improve your mechanics? Really focus on them. Like, I think I need to, when I'm like pitching, really focus and stay like. I sometimes I get like dazed off if I'm like working on my own. I'll start dazing off of things and get sidetracked. I think I need to like really focus on what I'm doing, and feel what I'm doing. I love that, right? So, but 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 understand, you can work hard for ten minutes and take a five minute break, and come hard work hard for ten minutes and take a five minute break. And you might get more out of that initially than just trying to stay focused on the exact same thing for 20 minutes. Does that make sense? Yes, right. Sir. You you might be able to be in that pitching lane. And again, I'm just giving suggestions that might help you focus, you know, because if I want to work out for 30 minutes, if I break that up into two 15 minute sessions, what does it matter? Nothing. In fact, it really does it, right? I could go pitch for 15 minutes and really focus in on this, right? And then to go maybe run around a block, go run a half a mile, go get some cardio in, maybe go do some push-ups or sit-ups over in there. Maybe just sit down and take a break, right? Maybe just jump on TikTok for two seconds because I want to clear my head. Maybe go make it, I don't know, whatever, right? And then come back and now I'm refreshed, I'm refocused, I can re-engage for another 15 minutes and then I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you have identified that it's hard for you to stay, because again, listen, in, 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 in softball, in the circle, right. You're out there an average of what five to seven minutes, maybe 15, if it's a long inning. Right. So you're not out there for 30, 45 minutes grinding on the circle at any one given moment anyway. You understand what I'm saying? You always take small breaks in between. I only got to get three outs and then I get to go sit down for a little bit and take a break. 
And then I come back and focus. But sometimes we get in these lessons and we're grinding 45 minutes. Wow, 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 wow. And you're like, ah, what are we doing? Right. It's, so it's okay to chunk that down if you want to and be able to come back with a harder, stronger, smarter focus. Does that make sense? Yeah. Chunk it out, right? Like if I were to give you an elephant, could you eat it all in one bite? No. Oh, first, why would you eat an elephant, weirdo? And then secondly, right? <laughs> and then secondly, no, you have to eat it one bite at a time, right? We can't do everything all at once. So all right, cool. What distractions have held you back in the past? What's kept you from having this and going all in in the past? Mm, myself, probably. I mean, I don't know. I just get like, sometimes I feel like, well, I have ADHD. So like that doesn't help because I get like, I'll start like, I'll focus for like two minutes. And then the next thing you know, I'm going to be like, butterfly and it's just i don't know it just happens it's okay right listen that's okay right we find things that work for you right i mean i i'm a hard focus guy too i don't like reading a lot of things i'm a visual guy i like to touch things put my hands on things right if i read a book for too long the words start to move all over the page it really makes me mad right i've had to get these old man bifocals now to be able to see a little bit closer <laughs> You know, but we all learn different ways. I like to put my hands on things. I like to talk, explore things, right? Uh, my wife likes to sit down and read a book and a manual and things like that. I couldn't do it, right? So, you know, you have to figure out what is your learning style, what you like to do, right? And then redirect yourself to refocus through those things. So again, if you're a hard focus girl, then maybe breaking it up into smaller sessions where you get breaks and you can distract yourself, but then make sure you come back with that focus, right? It might have to be smaller bursts of energy for you, right? And maybe that will allow your brain to relax a little bit so that you're not quite so tired that deep into Sunday. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So we're going to continue on turning it up. Let's turn it up, right? Elevating your performance. Describe what turning it up looks like in your daily training. If I were to say, yo, Rue, today we're going to turn it up, right? We're really going to get into it. What would you think I was talking about? Probably <laughs> like for me, I, I'd probably think more of like, let's say I'm running and I run a half a mile. Like today we're going to run a full mile instead of half we're gonna have like a heavier day kind of right maybe maybe not necessarily turn up the volume but turn up the intensity right so for me we might still run the half a mile but i might want to do it 30 uh, 30 seconds faster than we did it the day before right you know we we might still only do 10 squats but I might want to put five more pounds on the bar in order to see if we can handle that extra weight, right? Uh, we we might, you know, do do 10 bicep curls uh, at 20 pounds, but today we might do them at 22. So, you know, turning up the intensity, turning up the volume, and then, yeah, we might go a little bit further, go a little bit longer. Um, so, yeah, I, I love that, right? Just getting more engaged and knowing that this is the level we're coming at it today. But the only problem with that is what? What? What do we set when we do that? See if you can pick it up. If I'm here, if this is my intensity level and I bring it to here, I've set a new what? Expectation. Set a new expectation or a new standard, right? Because now if I can show up like this today, then how could I ever show up like this tomorrow? You, you understand what I'm saying? I, I can't. So if I show up like this today, I got to show up here tomorrow. I got to show up here the next day. I got to show up here the next day, right? That's me versus me. 1% getting better every single day, pushing the envelope, moving forward, making sure that we continue to work every day to be our best self with no excuses, no issues, nothing getting on our way, being able to navigate that process. Yes, hitting low points, but having the tools to come back up so much faster to get back to that high, right? 
to that high level to where we're here and we're continuing back to push forward, right? There's no slums. There's no any of that. There's no we're the worst at this. There's we're the best. We're keeping forward. Our mindset is moving forward. And if if I happen to catch a speed bump, it's a quick little dip that's going to slow me down and I'm going to pick myself right back up along with my teammates, my support group, and those around me so that I can continue on a positive path forward. Knowing... That if I lose focus, it's okay to take small breaks, re-engage myself, bring myself back down to where I need to be, and then have that positive path moving forward. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. So how do I stay focused? Let's list three habits that will keep you focused and driven throughout the season. Can you name one positive habit that you might already use that can keep you driven and focused throughout the season? For me, proving people wrong. Okay, let's go. Proving people wrong. All right, so motivation to tell the haters to take a back seat, right? Okay, I love that, right? I love that, right? Now, I mean, understand that 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 is good redemption when you do it, but it only gets you so far. Right. It feels good to win that game, especially if somebody's beaten you before. It feels good to win that game, especially if somebody's told you that you could. Right. If they use that apostrophe T on you. Right. If somebody says you can't, you wouldn't, you shouldn't, you couldn't, you won't. Right. We we I know you just told me you were in language arts. Right. Uh, but we don't we don't acknowledge that apostrophe T. Right. Because mm -hmm. that falls away because you and I know that we can. We will. We shall. We are for sure gonna. And as soon as I see you and I'm given the opportunity, watch out because <laughs> I got a bunch of pit bulls behind me and I'm ready to lead them all to victory. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right. So proving people wrong, but listen, that's a want. I want a habit. I want something that you can do every single day. What is something that I can really use? What is a tool that I can put in my toolbox to keep focused? Let me give you an example right? The journal that I'm giving you, right? The journal that I, that, that you guys are keeping, right? Your thoughts, what's going good? What's going that needs improvement? What's going the way that I wanted to? How have I had to navigate? This is where I'm going. Here's the reason that I'm doing this, right? Writing it every day to prove people wrong, right? That's where you put it in there, right? That's your habit to keep it focused every day. Boom. Okay. Today I did this, 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 and this. It's another step towards proving people wrong. If that's your motivator, right? It's another step towards getting where I need to be. But eventually, like I said, once you get where you want to be, proving people wrong is going to be a thing of the past, right? You just have to prove the rule of you today, right? That you're going to be better than the rule for you tomorrow, right? That Riley today wants to prove the Riley of yesterday that the girl she is today is going to improve the girl she's becoming tomorrow, right? Yeah. So if that's where we can get, that's how you prove people wrong. It's not in the circle on game day. It's because you could lose a game any given day, and that has nothing to do with person, people, or anyone who may or may not have said you can or cannot do, right? They don't control everything. Right. They, 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 so the game controls who wins or loses. Right. And anybody can win any game on any given day. Any one singular game is not a testament to somebody's value or worth. Does that make sense? You know that we've talked about that all year long. All right. So one habit I'm going to say journaling, journaling and putting our thoughts and our processes down there can keep us focused and driven. What else? Can you think of one? Um, eyes on the goal, like eyes keep focus on, on the goal. goal. Yes, eyes on the goal, right? Eyes on the goal. I'm going to continue to drop myself little notes or have a little reminder somewhere, right? Hey, boom, eyes on the goal, eyes on the prize, right? Um, and then a third one, right, is just having a routine, sticking and staying consistent with your routine. When I'm in the circle, this is what I'm doing. Boom, I'm locked in, routine. Right. When I'm doing my pregame warm ups, like I'm not just hanging out. Hey, girl, how was your day? Oh, you slept in. Oh, OK. Boom. boom. I'm not there for that. I'm there to lock in because I might only have three innings this game and I want to laser it down and make it so hard for somebody to pull me out. Right. 
That's what I want to do. And when I go into bracket, I want to warm up and I want to warm up. Every single warm up should be like you're warming up for a bracket game, right? Because that's how we get better. The focus should be no different. This is pool play. This is bracket. This is just warm ups. This is practice. No, this is Riley. And I don't change no matter where I'm going because I am a reflection and a testament of myself, my work ethic, my family, my thought process, the things that we're doing every day. So when I show up, yeah, I love you. And yeah, we're friends. And yeah, we're here to have fun. And yeah, you know, hey, girl, you get a walk, walk, you get a Okay, great. I got all that. Right. But I'm here to be locked in. I'm here to win. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to be here with my teammates. But when I'm warming up and I'm doing what I got to do, I'm locked in and laser focused. That's it. And then when the game's over, we can hug and walk around with hats and walk all around and have fun with friends and, you know, sit there and eat corn dogs and drink pickle juice and do all the fun stuff that we do when we're at a softball tournament. Right. Uh, but other than that, when I'm in between those dugouts, that's it. That's it. Rubu is locked in and she's ready to go. And, and, and that ain't nobody, ain't nothing else happening because if I'm in the circle, I'm locked in. If I'm on deck, ready to hit, I'm locked in. If I'm in that batter's box, I'm locked in. If I'm in the dugout, I'm locked in cheering on my team, right? Any point in time. Hey, we're on the clock. I'm locked in. Hey, it's time to warm up. That's it. Fun's over. I'm locked in. That's what's going to set you apart and give you habits that you can use to stay focused and driven. Because when you, when you stay up and you're winning, you stay driven, right? And then when you get down, if you're not winning, that should knock you in the butt to keep you to want to work harder to get back up and stay driven. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Word. So when things get tough, what will you do to remind yourself to stay focused? When we have that down point, what will we do in order to stay focused? Just focus on if you do get down and just think of like what you're doing good. Like let's say your pitching is going down, but your hitting's on, but you're just struggling because you can't pitch or you're struggling to pitch. You're not, you can't pitch, but <laughs> you need know. to focus. You can't, you have to focus on what you are doing good because that will help you with your stuff that you're not doing too good on. Love it. Right? That's what so I do. Yeah, I mean, do you have a reset, right? Where you kind of just shake it, shake it off, shake it, shake it out, right? Do you have a reset in your brain anywhere where you're like, okay, dude, that's two balls in a row. Now it's time to really just, I don't know, say something, butterfly, butterscotch, you know, knickknack, paddywhack, whatever, right? You know, but something that can reset your brain to where it's literally, here's the next pitch, the last one, boom, it doesn't matter, right? And now I'm just locked in and ready to go. So when things get tough, just remind yourself of your process, your work ethic, what you've done, why you're standing in that circle to begin with, why you're in that batter's box to begin with. You didn't just show up there. You've put in an elite level of work. You have an elite level of DNA. You have an elite level of uh, athletic ability. So be there with an elite level mindset, knowing that it's a game of failure, but the harder you work, the more consistent you are, the less chances of failure you have. Make sense? Yeah. How you will handle setbacks or bad games without letting them shake your confidence. So you've tried everything. I've just walked the last two batters. I gave up a double. It's the worst game I've ever had. Plus, I struck out twice looking. I don't know what's going on today. Oh, my God. End of the world. How will you handle a game like that? Well, one, I know that I'm going to have games that I'm not myself and I'm not the best of me, but I just try to like take a deep breath. I'm like, it's fine. We'll get through this. Like we got this. That's what I tell myself. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If it was a teammate, what would you say to a teammate in that situation? I would tell her like, she's good. She's got this. And if she had like a good game before, then and just had like this game was not on i'd been like you did really good today this is one game don't let this one game affect the rest of the weekend right so how do we internalize and say that to ourselves when we ourselves go through it right because then we say we don't look at that teammate like they're the worst person in the world but we internalize and look at ourselves like we're the worst person in the world because we feel we let somebody down. We feel like we didn't perform. We feel like, 
you know, everything was on the line and it was all on me and I just didn't get it done. Not knowing there's so many other, or not you knowing, but not giving credit to, there's so many other pieces of the puzzle. It's like the last girl to strike out didn't lose the game. There were so many more hits and outs and things that could have happened that led to that, right? The girl that pops out to left field for the last out didn't lose the game. The girl that makes the diving catch in outfield may have saved the game, but she didn't win the game, right? Because there were so yeah. many things leading the teammates had to do to get runs and scores. It's a whole total solar system of events that happens during that time frame that leads to a finality of it, right? So when you have setbacks or bad games, no, right? Like, okay, there's still time to reset. And if this game, it just doesn't happen, then I got to shake it off. I got, because the next game is there. Maybe coach makes a change. Maybe he doesn't, you know, but either way, I have to reset. Either way, I have to get myself clear because there's going to be another game. There's going to be another opportunity. Does that make sense? All right, so... Don't answer this one yet, but when you print it out, I want you to write it out because I want you to think about this. What is your personal mantra or affirmation for the season? Here's what I mean by that. For me, it's 60 for me, right? That's my personal thing. Anybody who sees 60 for me knows like, hey, that's Coach Bill. He's a weirdo. He wears that stuff all the time, right? Which is cool, right? That's my personal thing. 60 minutes a day in order to be your best self, to get your life together and go be your best self for everybody else around you, right? So what is Riley going to say to herself when when the world comes calling when somebody says man that's riley what are what are they thinking right what is she saying to herself to pull her out of a moment what is she who is she what is she how is she going to continue to thrive and pull herself to a place of greatness so just think about that for however long you need to and see if you can formulate something there that really connects with you does that make sense yes sir love it all right so Couple more reflection, committing to your journey, reflect on a time when you weren't all in. Ooh, tough question, right? When were you like, eh, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. And it doesn't have to be softball related. It could be anything, right? Uh, what held you back and what did you learn from not going all in? Um, I think I wasn't all in when I was working with my dad. Um, a couple weeks ago, like before we went to Tennessee and um, Cali, I know when I was working with him, I was not all in. I was like, I think I had more in the tank than I gave. So I think if I like gave more, maybe it would have in, like improved my performance in Chattanooga and California. But, I love it. So what held you back? Why why didn't you go all in? I was just tired. And I feel like for like drops, I was like super nervous to throw it. I was like just deep breaths. And I feel like I was taking off on my drop sometimes when I was throwing it to like not hurt myself. So could I replace the word tired with scared? Yes. Nervous, not scared, but nervous, oh. worried, not completely trusting myself coming back from an injury, right? You know, happy to happy to throw 65%, 75% and be playing, then really go all in and take a chance on, you know, being out here and not playing. Yeah. Right. Isn't it isn't it fair to admit that that, that is a lot of pressure? Right. That that, you know, you are young and, and you you did some things and your body kind of felt a certain way. And, you know, your parents did the right thing. They noticed it. Everybody shut you down. We got you the proper treatment. You went through the right steps. You did everything the right way. You took the time off. You didn't cheat. It drove you nuts, but you were still able to do it. And I want you to know that like, and then you were kind of just, okay, here she is. She's back in. And then it was boom, 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 boom. Right. So yeah, some people have an opportunity to come back and kind of work their way in. And, you know, you just came into one high pressure situation after another. Right. So I could understand how you would have a little bit of hesitation and throwing hard or throwing your best or, you know, uh, you're, you're, 
But let's be clear, you killed it everywhere you went. Like, it's not like you had this terrible summer and it was just like, oh my God, what's going on? Like, I mean, I think you guys finished what? Runner up, top three? I don't remember exactly. Uh, three? We came in third? In Tennessee. in Tennessee, we came in third and then Cali, we came in second. Right. So, I mean, it's not like, come on, <laughs> right? So, I mean, you had some lulls. You had some things that we weren't happy with right? That you weren't happy with. Um, but you also certainly had some moments of greatness, right? We're not going to act like those things didn't happen. Like we're not going to act like you didn't just maul some people down and lace team after team after team after team in that circle, right? We're not going to act like that didn't happen. You're going to get all due credit for that. Um, you know, uh, while there was a lot of recruiting going on for colleges out in California, there was a lot of recruiting going on for everybody everywhere. Right. So, you know, you had a great summer where you learned a lot. Uh, you also learned the importance of self-care, taking care of your arm, the importance of rest, taking care of your body and knowing that you have a unique talent, a unique gift. Um, but there's only so many shots in the gun if you don't properly take care of it. Uh, give it the rest that it needs, give it the proper care, ice, you know, rest, heat, all that good stuff that it needs. Um, but I, but I think we learned a lot this summer and I think you're primed and geared to have a great fall. Uh, and certainly going into your second year playing 14, you, uh, you know, um, you, you'll, you'll, you're going to start to set yourself apart. I'm sure. Uh, so what's success going to look for you at the end of the fall season? If I, if X, Y, and Z happens, I'll feel like it was really good. I think hitting my goals, hitting okay. 65, like consistently though, 65, not just like tapping it one time, like con consistently 65. Perfect. And then seeing my improvement in my batting, staying consistent and my batting average going up. Okay. Very good. And then it says how you ensure you're living the 60 for me mindset every day, right? And for you, right, that's just working out every day, working on my pitching every day, working on my mindset every day, working on my body, getting my arm care done. All of these things that you know you need to do, right? You want to be in the HPP program for Team USA. You want to go play in Italy. Guess what? That starts now. I can't guarantee that you'll get there, but I can guarantee if you work hard, you bust your butt, you take care of your body, you do everything that you need to do, you'll have a good a chance as anybody else in your class. You understand what I'm saying? I can't He's guarantee hit. that you'll hit 400, but if you work out and you kick it and you do it every single day, I can guarantee that you'll have a better chance and opportunity to do it. I can't guarantee that you'll hit 65 this season, but I know if you work out, you'll bust your butt and you'll have every opportunity in order to do it because you're determined, you're driven, you're ready. I'm inspired by you. I'm ready to see some of these things happen. I'm about to start researching this HPP and building a plan for you. You understand what I'm saying? If that's where my girl wants to go, then that's where we're going to take you. You understand what I'm saying? Like, because it's your so goals and your dreams, bro, you can't let anybody limit those nobody nobody not even mom and dad like i'm gonna say it right like not that they ever would right but but you have to continue to push yourself to where you want to go you have to continue to push yourself to be where you want to be right because mom and dad can want all of these things for you right they can hire all these fancy coaches they can do all these things but if you ain't in you ain't locked in you ain't killing it you ain't working as hard as you can it'll mean squat I don't have the magical words. Pitching coach don't have the magical spin. Hitting coach don't have the magical hit. You know, mom and dad don't have the pixie dust. Like we're all just trying to work in order to give you the best tools. But at the end of the day, you got to engage and you have been, but now we about to turn it up. So when you see me out on the field and all I, you hear me yell is turn it up. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you hear me talk about turn it up that, you know what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. So final thought, the season's an opportunity to leave everything on the field, right? I'll let you read that later, right? But you, it's everything. This is it. When we hang up this phone, that's it. The season, this, this is officially done. We have our goals. We have our plan. We have our things. We know what we're going to do. We know where we want to go. We know what's happening, Captain. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, sir. We're going to engage in that and we're going to turn it up. We're going to get locked in. We're going to get laser focused even more than we are. 
What questions do you have for me? Mom, none. Nothing? No, this sir. Fun. I enjoyed this one. This was a good little conversation. I, you, 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 I like talking to you, man. You engage well, right? You know what you want, right? You're taking this seriously. You're, you're doing all of the hard work, you know, um, your family seems engaged. Mom, you have any questions? How's, how are you seeing things? What, what would, what, what do you got? You put on the camera. Uh, <laughs> I can just listen to her. She doesn't, she doesn't have to, it's up to her. I don't really have any questions. I just, um, I'm excited to see her actually like take these things and put them to work. Um, cause I think sometimes like, instead of just saying it, like I want to see her really hit the ground and run with it. Right. I think she works hard and we talked to her about that. Like no doubt she's working harder than 99% of kids her age, but I feel like Sometimes like it's not always like intentional and so to actually see her take it to the next step like level, see her right. growth from that. Right. And again, right, like let's not let's not confuse because she's tall and you know she's athletic and, and she looks older than she actually is, that sometimes she's just 13 too, and she's going to lose focus and she's going to be all over the place and she's going to have a messy room and she's going to forget to do homework and she's going to need to be reminded five times to do the dishes and, you know, all of these different things. So that part um, may be, she's the most OCD kid. She, she is all over the place, but she's okay. also a high level OCD. <laughs> well, good. Then, then, then well, that's good. Like that. Nobody lives in it. Her homework is always done as soon as she hits the front door almost. <laughs> All right, Riley. Well, you might have to give yourself a break every once in a while too, right? <laughs> no, uh, this year they said that they need their homework done. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. I was it. ready. Hey, listen, set a standard, right? If this is where we're at, all that does is give us more time to work out. All that does is give us more time to focus in on, on our big time goals, right? You know, because academics is a standard, athletics is a standard, student athlete, if you can get them both done at a high level, that's exactly what we're working on, right? So, mm -hmm. all right, good. And then, uh, you know, let's, uh, hold on a second. Let's bloop, stop.